Hello ladies and gentlemen, here is the, another game uh, from 1977 October Revolution uh, Tournament and with the white pieces we have uh, veteran Grandmaster uh, Raphael uh, Vaganian, uh, Armenian uh, Grandmaster living in Germany and uh, with the black pieces uh, player Milo Rad uh, Nazivic, um, uh, Serbian Grandmaster and lawyer and one of the top Yugoslav uh, players uh, in the 70, 70s. And uh, he actually drew Bobby Fischer in 1967 at the uh, Skopje Olympiad. Um, uh, Milo Rad uh, fortunately passed away in 2005, but uh, he was born in 1936, so he had a, uh, a good run. Now, in this position, um, this position... Uh, it's stemming from a Dutch Leningrad defense opening and uh, I did another video uh, dealing with the uh, you know these middle game positions in the uh, Leningrad Dutch because I find them very interesting and uh, educational and I also play the Dutch and have been playing it for and studying it for a long time so uh, the Leningrad that is um, I dabbled in the classical Dutch in the Stonewall but uh, I think the Leningrad is uh, the best option uh, for players uh, seeking uh, to play the Dutch. But um, anyway, this uh, position fascinates uh, me, this structure. And uh, here, uh, black is white to move. Uh, excuse me, black to move. White is just played to move. Queen D2, um, connecting uh, his rooks and planning on possibly bringing a rook to D1 or uh, E1. And um, so black is... Uh, has several options here. You can play moves like knight e6, right? Going after that uh, dark square bishop that's opposing his bishop on g7. Uh, he can drop a knight into e4, right? That's a main theme. He can even play a move like rook uh, to e8, rook a e8, uh, piling up on the e pawn, putting pressure. Uh, if you look at the features of the position, you will notice you have um, a semi closed uh, structure here. Um, the D file is half open, and this benefits white as he can attack the uh, weak D pawn on D6, and the E file is half open. And this is good for white, excuse me, good for black as he would like to pile up on the E pawn and put pressure down the E file <clears throat> and strengthen his grip on the E4 square. Okay. Um, another important feature in this, very important, is that the dark squares around the black king are a little bit shaky because of the Leningrad structure uh, with the pawns on h6, excuse me, h7, g6, and f5. Uh, they're all being on the light squares. This severely weakens the dark squares around the king. So that bishop on g7 is paramount, very important. And this is why uh, you see some variations in the Dutch where white just simply gives up the exchange on a1, leaves his rook there, because that bishop on g7 is that important. So um, in the dark square, and what's what's um, fascinating about this position also is that the dark square bishops um, uh, for white is also valuable, um, but it's even more so valuable for black. So normally that exchange uh, is good. Uh, for the white side, as you can see, the um, weakening of the king side is a um, major turnoff for a lot of top GMs uh, as far as playing the Dutch consistently. The Dutch have never gained that respectability, say, of a Nimzo Indian, a Queen's Gambit declined, or something like that because of the uh, risk inherent. Along with the dark square weakness, you have the light square uh, weakness also. Since f5 is played, the diagonal uh, going from uh, d5 in this instance all the way to the king on g8 is wide open. And as a result of the pawn being on d6, the f7 pawn being moved to f5, you have this vulnerability that exists on the square e6. Now it's guarded by pieces, but it's something to uh, keep in mind here. So there's a lot of stuff uh, going on this in, in this uh, position and that happens in this structure so black must be very careful even uh, when having equality it's easy to make a mistake and things uh, can go wrong in a hurry so when you're playing this system 
accuracy is very important uh, for black. All right. In this position, uh, Nizievic, again, as I mentioned, could have played knight nice ce4 and had just probably a draw by perpetual here. Right. Bishop takes d4, knight takes d4, and just keep going back, back and forth. That's an easy, easy cop out, right? Okay. Another option is uh, simply rook a e8. Natural move. Play could continue. These are just sample lines. e3, knight e4 again. Right, thematic in the Dutch. a5. Again, a rich position, but no, uh, no problems <clears throat> here. Also, rook a e8, rook fd1 is possible again with this idea of um, eyeing this pawn at some point. Now, with all the attention on this pawn, um, let me say that, of course, black wants to uh, liberate if possible. Back to our starting position after queen d2, um, Nizivik made a natural move. 96. 96 threatens to take the bishop here away from um away from white and after all right i gave a little speech about how important the bishop is on g7 so it's natural for uh black not to want to trade his bishop off but get rid of white's bishop after all if white's bishop is removed then um black can try to dominate the dark squares itself and here Say after bishop e3, knight g4, going after the bishop, rook fd1, pressuring this pawn again. Knight takes e3. Of course, knight f takes e3. A lot of weakness there. Queen takes e3. Rook f e8. Queen d2. Knight c5. Black is just fine. He's willing to give up this pawn, for example. Queen takes d6. Queen takes. Rook takes. And now he gives up his own bishop takes c3 and rook takes e2 with uh with the equality here and he's uh, uh solved this uh his um problems All right still has to be careful but he solved a major um issue in the position and this is probably what um milo rad was uh, banking on this knight excuse me is uh bishop e3 and then knight g4 grabbing uh the bishop here However, the game at the 96 just gave up his bishop. Gave up the bishop here. Bishop takes f6. And the idea behind this is that he prevents or he makes it more difficult for this pawn advance, right, by getting rid of the knight. And what he wants to do is pressure these pawns and make them uh, weak on the uh, queen side. So let's see how it happened. So first rook takes f6 happened. And then a move b4. All right. So his idea is to play b5, and to create some kind of hanging pawn structure like that for black. Or if black pushes is a backward a d pawn and expose the d5 square, of course, where you have this fork situation. So knight d8, b5. Of course, black wants to hold, but notice the it's uh, his pieces are becoming a little awkward. 96. Rook fd1 pressuring the pawn on d6. Bishop f8. And now b takes. And b takes. So now black has these uh, hanging pawns that he has to deal with. And his pieces are somewhat awkwardly placed. Alright. So good strategic move by Vigenian here. Right, he gives up the bishop player pair, so he trades one advantage for um, for another. So he gives up his bishop pair, but now he has uh, weaknesses, more weaknesses to assault in the black position. Rook b1, just taking over the uh, open files that was just created. Rook f7, and so now black has to try to untangle his pieces and defend at the same time. So these end games can be very tough. These these not end games, but these middle game these middle game positions um, for both sides can be very tough. Even though it, it's equal, it's kind of like one slip up and you can be in trouble. 
Here, if a Ganian played e3, e4 was also possible. And then black can play knight c5 and say e takes and bishop takes f5. So with with the little play here, okay, you see the uh, tempo on the rook. The Ganian just kept it solid and played the move e3. Queen f6. And now knight e2. Knight c5. And that knight wants to come to e4, of course. Knight fd4. And now you see the pressure against these pawns. Knight e4. Queen c2. So so far, um, uh, Nazivik is, is hanging in there. He has these weaknesses, but he's he's holding his own. Now he plays queen e5, which, uh, which is a mistake. Um, or so it's not a big mistake, but it's a small mistake, an uh, in inaccuracy. Here, um, better was to play this move rook c8 because the the problem is is um this pawn this pawn right here. Okay, so rook c8 gets the rook off the diagonal, it, it fortifies the c pawn, and after knight c3, this knight can move away from e4 without jeopardizing the c6 pawn. So, for example, a3, queen e7, knight c2, bishop g7, and knight f4, and black is, is still okay here. So after queen c2, he plays queen e5 because if you notice in this position, it's not it's not a real threat. But if you just look at it, the, if bishop takes um, e4, pawn takes e4, queen takes e4, right? It, it's like oh, black is one of uh, white is one of pawn, but it's not a realistic, um, you know, a realistic uh, uh, threat here. So, for example, rook c8, and of course, this is a du dubious uh, move here anyway. You give you give the light square bishop like that. But notice there's this attack now on f7. So keeping the queen and rook lined up like that, and that's why this move can't be can't be played because uh, black would just be winning after after that. So he does this move, queen e5, which kind of protects the knight from a threat that isn't really there okay but it not only does that he he kind of picks up the defense of this pawn because he wants to get this bishop back in the game somehow either on g7 or or h6 so it's kind of like he's he's following a faulty idea because there's really no way for this bishop to get in the game so moving this bishop back and forth is kind of like a waste of time here so rook c8 is a, a more constructive idea. Rook comes to the seventh rank. Bishop h6 again. There's no real purpose to to that move. No constructive purpose. The knight comes to f4. Now queen e8. Rook db1. And white is just piling up. The positional pluses in the position. The bishop can't find a good spot. Moves again. Knight d3. C5. And now knight b5 is played here. And so now there's all type of um, ideas in the position. As you can see like this knight here. Maybe if this knight was removed somehow. Then white can play. A move like, uh, you know, knight takes d6, for for instance. So the pressure of dealing with the, you know, various tactical uh, threats in the position uh, forces black's hand. Another threat in this position, the main threat is just knight c7. So what do you do? This rook can't really move. The you know this pawn, the pawn is hanging. It's just a lot of pressure in in the position, right? And it's hard to hold. So Black's best is probably just to try to trade off. Bishop takes b5 and 
Then just rook 7 takes b5. Black still has the pressure, but... Excuse me, white still has the, the better position, but... You know, black can try to hold on a little bit more. And then maybe like rook d8 after that. Still very hard to hold like hold this type of position. Black's um, pawns are, are very weak. This d pawn and this a7 pawn. And white's play is real natural. For instance, knight f4. You know, ending up here on d5. So I think black is in a whole world of trouble. But that was his best bet. Instead of playing bishop takes b5, he went with bishop c6 here. And figured that he can hold everything together. But this just um, caused him to fall victim to a simple combination. A rook takes f7. Queen takes f7. And now knight takes d6. And now the knight can't capture because then the bishop on um, c6 is hanging. So instead he played queen e7. And now black's position just starts to deteriorate rapidly. Knight takes e4. F takes e4. Knight f4. And now you have three, ice, three pawn islands. Rook e8, rook d1, queen e5. So black gets his command of the dark squares as he wanted. But um, there's too many um, negatives in his position to, um, you know, for for black to be able to maintain a balance. So now he has this idea of coming in with rook b2, rook b1, uh, rook, rook e8, rook b1. B8, probably make it some time control, and now the bishop goes out to h3, and the light square diagonal rears his head again, this, uh, again, c4 to g8, and notice there's really no protection there, the bishop on c6 is now misplaced, white allows black to come in, and, uh, with rook b2, because he can start a mating attack, rook d8, King f7, and simply queen d1, <clears throat> bishop f6, and now uh, Vaganian played uh, rook c8, just attacking the bishop. Even stronger is just simply bishop e6, check. And if king g7, then rook g8, king h6, and rook g4 with the, um, you know, as a, for instance, one of the threats here is like rook, g, rook g6, uh, check. Okay, and if so, only defense to that really is um, legitimate defense, that is, because you can play moves like queen f5 and queen h5, but only legitimate defense is bishop e8, and then the rook would just take. So uh, at the rook c8, um, Nazivik resigned anyway because you have the same, you know, same story if rook takes a2, for instance, then bishop e6, and it kind of leads to the same um you know scenarios so i just wanted to share that late middle game slash ending uh with you from the dutch defense and um i think study of these uh these middle games really will uh enhance you know enhance your uh, chess understanding um the opening the opening is important of course all aspects of chess are important but Un trying to understand the middle games will really um, improve, you know, your thought process uh, during the games. And it just goes to show you that, um, you know, just because the theory might say a position is equal or um, here's the starting position. It might say the position is equal or, you know, both sides have chances. Um, that's not enough to win, a, you know, a chess game. Uh, you can lose very quickly. Like, for instance, this position is equal, but you have to play it uh, correctly. Or you can end up in trouble uh, very quickly, as um, Milo Rad did. You know, you went from this position here to where he basically had one main weakness, which was this uh, d6 pawn, which was easily uh, manageable. For instance, after just knight c4 to just after making this move, knight e6, which wasn't a bad move per se. But after this this concept, um, he just wasn't able wasn't able to cope and uh, you know, just went just went uh, downhill from here. 
you know, he just wasn't able to um, maintain. So, good game uh, by Vaganian. And, um, you know, as I always say, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned. Uh, comments are welcome. And uh, please press the like button and uh, subscribe. And uh, I will see you soon on the next video.